No, I don't waste no time How you doing guys and welcome back to a new video for those of you that are new to the channel my name is Joshua Daniel George social media marketing and online coach I have my own advertising agency called Brandpreneur and I also have my own education business where I train the people like you guys up to become media buyers have their own agency start their own online business build it up scale it automate it so that you too can live life on your own terms and I basically want to discuss a topic which is one of them like I understand why a lot of people make these mistakes but I sort of want to nip this in the bud as soon as possible because first of all I made the same mistakes as well and it's very very hard to get out of this so uh, hopefully this can sort of switch your whole perception of the agency business model change sort of your mindset around it so that you can sort of break through those barriers you don't plateau with your agency and you can actually scale this you know to the absolute next level so what i'm going to do is i'm going to briefly describe what the average agency uh, looks like nowadays you know with all the gurus out there that are teaching this and sort of promoting this way of, of thinking and so on and so forth um the reason being because i've done the same i've made the same mistakes in the past I've actually switched so in the last 12 to actually longer than that 18 to 24 months I've completely restructured first of all my mindset when it comes to having an agency and just the whole agency structure in general um, and uh, it's everything is just being performed much much better because of this and no longer am I sort of like you know bobbing around the six figure mark you know we've actually you know been able to take the agency to a new level which i'm obviously you know, incredibly proud of it's taken a lot of hard work and um, a lot of system building and so on and so forth but now looking back in hindsight you know it was like I, previously i was blind and now i can see right like you know in hindsight the steps that i've made were very very obvious but when you're in that sort of pre six figure mark just starting out and you you're seeing all these videos online from people telling you you know to do one thing it can be very very difficult to sort of look at things in this way so without ramming on too much i'll sort of briefly draw out what i'm talking about so for those of you that are just getting started with SRMA or you know you've already in SRMA for a while but you still you can't just get past that 10k a month mark um, or the six figure mark, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is basically what your agency will look like now, right? And of course, this won't be completely accurate for everyone. You know, I can't predict or I can't you know, see how you guys have structured the agency. But like I said, this is what it looked like for me. And I know that this is what it looks like for a lot of you guys as well, because a lot of people that join my program, whether it is the beginner program or the high level program, this is what the agency is usually structured like provided that you know that person has actually done a, a course previously or watched other people previously um, and then they come to me and then once we change these little things and we implement these little changes that is when they start pushing the needle again so of course we've got the four pillars i know these are really ugly pillars guys i've just quickly drawn them and um, we've got outreach we've got sales we've got project management and we've got project development so briefly because of course i've got you know a dozen of videos about this outreach is where you reach out to potential business owners um you, know, you can do that via email via facebook message via instagram via linkedin um uh, what else have i missed out the um, appointment setters is another one that's all of a sudden very popular nowadays i see a lot of people doing this i think one person must have said they have used an appointment set and then it's like this train of thought right like everyone starts doing it because now that is like the new big thing um let's see if i missed anything there so email facebook instagram linkedin appointment setters um that's all i can think of at the moment if i've missed anything out just just let me know but you know you guys get the point right like those are sort of the standard ways of uh, of outreach for anyone who's getting started oh we've got cold calling as well um no idea if people actually still do this but i know that it was a method of outreach back when i got started there we go that's a very old-fashioned dial-up phone there um and then sales there's two ways of going about the sales right when you're sort of in this situation you either do it yourself um there we go that's a little man that's you and then of course we've got a closer um so you basically get someone else to do it on your behalf 
Then in terms of the management, it can differ, right? It depends on how you've structured it. Some people use Slack, some people use um, Facebook Messenger, some people use WhatsApp, some people use Skype. Um, what else have I seen? Bootcamp or Basecamp, one of the two. I can never remember what it's called. Um, and then what else we got? Monday.com, whatever. You know, Asana is another one. So you've got a bunch of, you know, sort of communication slash management softwares that a lot of people use and then in terms of development um again the sort of two routes that people go down either they hire a chief freelancer because that's what they've been told right to work on the business not in the business god forbid you work on the business um or work in the business you know that's uh, what's that like um anti-guru 101 101 you know if you work in the business oh you know you won't you definitely won't achieve uh, anything right if uh, at least if that's, that's what the, the gurus say so freelancer either off of upwork or the facebook groups that's the standard route um or of course you can try it yourself and usually you know in the situations like this um the results will you know, usually suffer because let's face it you know you've you've found this business model because you want to make money not because you necessarily want to get clients results Okay, so that is, like I said, you know, if you guys feel, um, what's the word, like if, if you guys feel, okay, like this sounds like, like the situation you're currently in, then just feel free to just watch this video and see this as, um, you know, feedback rather than me critiquing your agency or bullshitting all over your agency. So um, anyway, in terms of the outreach, let's pick up the, the appointment sessions because I know that is very popular nowadays. Um, let's say you get an appointment set in an agency. Um, they range from 1K a month to what else you've got. You've got the, you've also got the hourly rate ones, right? Like where you just sort of like train the media buyers um, or the appointment setters, sorry. You train the appointment setters up yourself, so for $3 an hour or something like that. Okay? Um, so let's say your average retainer is 1K. So we'll just put the euro sign there. So that's your 1K a month retainer. Apologies if this is a bit of a messy video, guys. I'm trying to get my point across. I'm sort of thinking out loud here. But you've got your 1K a month retainer, and then your appointment setting agency is also 1K a month. So technically, one client and you're broken even, right? So that's sort of like the, the mindset behind that, which is fine, of course. You know, it is an investment into your business. Um, let me just pan out here and move this more to the left just so we can continue drawing. So you've invested 1K into your appointment setting agency or you do the $3 an hour, you know, whatever that comes out at. Um, the maths is not the important part of the video, it's the mindset behind it. Um, and then you get, you get your clients for 1K a month. Then, uh, because you've gotten a closer to do this, they take 20%, um, so that is 200 in this case. Then um, in terms of your management, I don't know, whatever, you know, it's, 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 you're on Slack, it's an extra six, something like that. Then you use a freelancer that you found on Upwork and they charge 30%, which is 300 a month. So that is 500 a month. Um, so the first month you've basically broken even on your retainer. So this is month one. You've broken even on your retainer, but because you've got a closer and you've got a, um, a freelancer doing the work, you're actually at a 500 loss. However, the mindset that you guys have, of course, is, well, in month two, we haven't got that uh, appointment set and retainer because we've already got the client in, and then we actually make a 500 profit because it's a 1,000 month retainer, 500 are our costs, and then in month three, same thing again. So with that logic, basically in month four, we've got on you know, we're in the green, right? Because um, you know we've invested money. Um, five hundred is our. Uh, we're, you know, we've made a five hundred loss in month one, five hundred gain in month two, five hundred gain in month three, and then in five hundred gain in month four basically means that okay, you know, we're finally starting to make money off this client. However, the issue with this whole sort of structure is that because the fulfillment part, so the results, isn't actually up to scratch. Usually that is where you lose the clients. So let's, you know, again, you know, feel free to continue watching if this is how you do it or this is how you've been taught. You've got the 90 day quantum accelerator, you know, whatever program you want to call it, where you basically tell the clients, okay, within 90 days, we're actually going to get you a return on investment. So after three months, the client's supposed to expect an return on investment, but 
that fourth month hardly ever comes because the client has grown frustrated with the lack of the results in month one, month two, and month three. And yes, you've told them to wait 90 days, but after 90 days, the results just still aren't there, right? Like unless you are lucky or unless you do actually um, find one of the few freelancers that can actually do a good job here, um, you'll notice that the client will leave you. And what you'll basically see is that you've got this basically this leaky cup. So this, this, is, this is sort of yeah, your, your, your cup, your agency cup, if you will. Um, and you basically, you're pouring water into this cup or you're getting clients, but there's a big hole at the bottom and the clients are basically, you know, the water's leaking out or the clients are leaving you, you know, right before the cup is, you know, able to fill. So let's say the rim of this cup is a 10K mark, right? And the only way you can basically get to that 10K mark is if you sign more clients than you lose. So every single month, you need to anticipate a client leaving you because the results aren't as good, and that means that you need to get more clients. So the first part of the month, you're probably trying to, um, you know, you're trying to recover from the client's loss, and then only from that point onwards are you actually, you know, gaining money because you're getting more clients in. But just think to yourselves, like, is this really the way to go? Like, can we really get up to 50k a month, you know, 40k a month, 50k a month? Uh, maybe even 100k a month with this structure and in my opinion no because like, no, let's face it um, well, what everyone says we need to keep the pipeline full right so let's say this is the pipeline um, oh what I'll do is I'll just erase this just to give ourselves some room so that sort of funnel above the bucket is the pipeline there we go so pipeline needs to be full so we've got all these leads coming in let's make the funnel a bit more funnel a bit more of a bucket now. So we've got all these potential clients coming in. You know, the pipeline is full because we've got the appointment set and agency or email marketing, you know, whatever you guys use um, you know, to do the outreach. I'm not really aware of how everyone's doing it nowadays, but this is what I see and what I hear. So we've got this pipeline and, you know, every now and again, we get a client into our bucket, into our agency. So there we go. And then, like I said, because we can't get the results, the client will eventually leave. So we need to literally be in the trenches 24 seven, trying to keep that pipeline as full as possible, doing everything we can think of to basically, you know, get more clients in than we lose. And I'm just, I'm getting tired just thinking about that whole structure. Like that is so tiring. And I remember when my agency was like this, you know, it's like playing football without a goalkeeper, right? Like you'll score five, but you'll concede four or you'll concede three. You know, it's, it's every single time you're working basically as hard as you can to just make sure that you score more than you concede. Um, and like I said, this is just this vicious cycle, right? So you, 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 you lose a client, so you go back to outreach, so you set up all these systems, you get all these appointment setters, you know, you maybe even start running ads for yourself, which costs even more money. You send that message on LinkedIn, on Facebook, you're in the Facebook groups trying to find that new golden nugget or new method of outreach. Um, and then you get a client, you lose the client because the fulfillment's awful and so on and so forth. And it's just this vicious cycle over and over and over again. And like I said, if this sounds familiar, guys, then just you know continue watching. If, it's, if it doesn't, if you're happy with the way things are going, then feel free to click away. But I know that for a lot of you guys, like this is the case, right? Like this is something that you guys are dealing with. And in my opinion, if you really want to scale, there are two things that we really need to focus on. And that is, of course, the outreach. You know, it, there is the, a method in the madness. I definitely agree that the pipeline needs to be full. But more importantly, I think the development needs to be on point as well. Like at the end of the day, guys, okay, I understand, you know, social media marketing, SMMA has got this stigma around it, has got this sort of perception that, okay, sign two clients, live the last lifestyle. Sign, you know, a couple of clients, quit your job and travel to Bali or, you know, whatever you want to do. But at the end of the day, guys, we are actually generating a service-based business. And in my opinion, you need to actually be offering a service that you are proud of. Um, and there are two ways you can do this, in my opinion. So we just make this arrow go this way, because it's obviously a bit messy if you do it here. So with the development, with the Facebook ads, or whatever you offer, Google ads, Snapchat ads, Bing ads, you know, I don't really know what you guys are offer nowadays. We just focus on one service, which is Facebook ads. We are extremely good at what we do. And quite frankly, I am actually the one that runs the ads for my clients. I'll explain my structure in just a second, but what I what I would recommend you guys do, obviously, you know, do whatever you want, but become the expert yourself, okay? So actually learn 
Facebook ads, develop that Facebook ads skill, okay? Why it is a high, it's a high ticket skill anyway. Like if you could, if you know how to run Facebook ads, it's like once you learn multiple languages, the next language you learn will be easier because you already recognize patterns from the previous languages that you've learned. So if you understand Facebook ads through and through and you look at the Google Ads Manager, you will recognize things that are the same with Facebook ads. You will see, okay, well, this is the same as the campaign level. This is the same as the ad set level. You know, this is how we run the ads. This is what, this is the copy that works. This is what doesn't work. And then the same thing, if you understand Facebook and Google, you'll very, very easily pick up Snapchat as well. You'll pick up Clubhouse as well because the marketing at its core, the structure of media buying and you know, basically marketing, basically satisfying the need of the customer, that stays the same. Okay, so if you become the expert at Facebook ads, then you will get your clients a better return on investment. You'll make more money because of it, and you'll be able to charge much more as well. So if you are the expert, rather than charging, or rather than you know basically losing a client after 90 days, you will keep the clients on for longer. So your lifetime value will actually go up rather than leave, you know, a client leaving after three months, they might stay for eight months. And if you charge um, a, a thousand a month, that's 8K per client. They might even stay longer, might stay for 12 months, that's 12K a client. And then yeah, then it's fine. You can get that appointment agency for a thousand a month. You can run Facebook ads for a thousand a month because you know that on the back end, you know, you are actually making a lot of money you know, off the back of it. So it will, be, it will always be profitable. Okay, now with that said, because you are the expert at it, you don't need to charge a thousand a month because you know you can get the results and you've got the results to back it up. So rather than a thousand, you can actually start charging five thousand or maybe two thousand plus, um, you know, a, a rep share on the back end. So the ROAS deal or whatever you want to call it, you know, because first of all, you've got the confidence because you can get the results. So you don't mind actually only charging 2K because you know you actually make the money on the ROAS deal. Um, and you've got the results to back up to actually you know, validate to the clients that you are worth 2,000. Because a client would much rather pay you 2,000 knowing that it's gonna get 10,000 back at the least than pay you 1,000 and actually make a loss, okay? So it's not about the amount of money that you charge, it's about the return on investment that you get. And obviously the higher the return on investment, technically the more you can charge as well, okay? Now for those of you that really do not wanna become the experts at Facebook ads, you know, okay, still there's people that still think you know that we are forbidden to work in the business you know we're already working on the business right if that is you then okay just become adequate at it okay if you understand what's going on if you understand the basics and you understand everything that's going on with ios 14 you understand the tracking etc to a point where if you really needed to you could run the ads yourself then you can hire a freelancer train a freelancer um, but you'll more importantly know if the freelancer is doing a good job or not. And that is one of the biggest mistakes that I made as well, is I didn't, I offered Facebook ads as a service back in the day, but I didn't actually know how to run these ads myself. And then I'll buy, I'll find the freelancer on Upwork, cheap and cheerful, 200 a month, I'm charging 1500 to the client, so I'm happy, the freelancer's happy, uh, but the client is not happy because the freelancer isn't actually doing a good job. Of course, you get what you pay for. If you you know pay for a two hundred pound a month freelancer, you're not going to get the best results. But I did not know that. I asked the freelancer, okay, how are we getting on? And he's giving me answers like, oh well, we got a thousand clicks this month, or we got fifty page likes this month. And I'm thinking, okay, well, that sounds good. That's that sounds reasonable. You know, there's growth there. There's momentum being made. Not knowing that the client is not getting a return on investment, not getting a return on ad spend. You know, and of course that is a very extreme example. Um, I'm hoping that you guys understand the metrics a bit more, especially those that have been watching my videos for longer, but you need to understand if your media buyer is doing a good job or not. So it is actually in your best benefit, in the benefit of your agency, to understand the service that you offer to a certain degree, or make sure that there's someone that is managing your media buyer that does know. So a quick example, I actually know a few agencies that work with me, um, with appointment setters and they don't manage the appointment setters but it's basically appointment setter then you've got the appointment setting manager that manage the appointment setter and they communicate and the appointment setting manager communicates with the client or in this case you know the other agency okay so they don't actually train the appointment setters they don't actually you know speak to the appointment setters they speak to the appointment setting manager 
and that way the appointment setter manager knows exactly if the appointment setter is basically doing his job and working well enough um, and then you the agency or the client all you need to do is basically speak to the manager same goes with facebook ads if you don't know how to run facebook ads make sure there's someone in between you guys so you've got agency owner and then you've got maybe like media buying manager or something like that and then you've got the media buyer and they run the facebook ads they communicate with the media buyer manager and then they communicate with you and then you know okay at least the facebook ads are in safe hands despite the fact that you have no idea what's going on okay so that is another option but like i said i would highly recommend to just have an adequate amount of knowledge on the facebook ads or actually become the expert yourself and if you do become the expert yourself you haven't got that 30% profit, uh, you know, profit loss because you know you're outsourcing it to someone else. You actually have more profits. You'll realise that it's much less work than you might first think. It's you know obviously a high ticket skill, so technically you will never actually go poor ever again because worst comes to worst, you can just start running ads for yourself. You know, offer a service or you know, um, or offer your service to other agencies. You know, if if necessary, if that is a point that you need to get to but by having that skill you will never go poor because it is a high income skill and you can charge a lot of money for it if you know what you are doing okay so in terms of the fulfillment part in terms of running the ads understand what you're doing and just take pride in the service that you offer okay rather than trying to outsource it for cheap and cheerful understand what you are offering when the client can get a return on investment and you'll notice that your agency will be a much better agency because of it rather than offering these fucking 90 day accelerator programs only to lose your clients after the 90 days then in terms of the outreach because we've now uh, basically you know, sorted out this hole in your cup you'll notice that your cup will basically fill up you'll easily get to that 10k a month mark um, and you'll be easily go beyond that as well um, but because that cup is full we can start now also qualifying our clients a bit more. We can start charging more and saying, okay, well, if you can't afford 2K a month or if, you don't, if you're not willing to pay 2K a month, that's fine. My cup is full, you know, I'll just find someone else who can. You're no longer constantly in the trenches, you know, trying to find the next client because worst case scenario, if you don't get a new client that month, you've, you've, you've basically stabilized because you haven't lost any clients either. Okay, so that will bring in much more calmness, and stability in your agency and they will also allow you to spend more time putting systems in place that will actually scale your agency further so rather than you know relying on appointment setters relying on your facebook ads messages or this email outreach you can start to run ads you know you can actually start because you know okay lifetime value of my client is 12k technically i can spend 11k and still be profitable. I don't recommend spending 11K to acquire a client. There'll definitely be something wrong with your systems if that is how much it's cost them. But because you know how much a client is worth for you, you can also work out how much you can spend to acquire that client. And when you start running ads for your agency, that is when you start getting to that bliss stage and that is when you start making a lot of money for your agency. So that is it for today. My apologies for the rants and all the messy drawings. I hope I came across, you know, or you know, brought across the message that I wanted to bring across, which is actually, you know, understand Facebook ads or understand the service that you want to offer. Any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or send me a message on Instagram at Joshua Dangle George or Facebook. I'm active on both those platforms. So feel free to send me a message there. If you haven't already done so, feel free to check out the Lifestyle Design community, which is my free Facebook group that also has a free beginner course on how you can get started with social media marketing as well as a bunch of templates and scripts and so on and so forth. You know, whatever you want to use to get started is in that group and it's completely free so feel free to check that out. Like, share, comment, subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video.